Hello, hello, good evening. All right, good evening, good evening. We're going to wait here. Oh, there you are. All right. So welcome. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Welcome. Thank Very you. nice to have you here. All right. So let's see. Let's just wait a couple of minutes for the rest of students so that they can connect. So let's see. Let's give them some time so that Good evening, good evening, welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you here, good. All right, guys, so let's see. Let's wait one more minute and then I'll pass the attendance for the first time. So let's see. Okay, then. so it's eight now, so let's start. So welcome, e, e Beatriz, Christian, and Charlie. So welcome, really nice to have you here. So, Thank you. all righty. As I said, we're going to e, start with the attendance. That's going to be the first thing here. So once you listen to your name, eh, you just tell me, right, present, and so that I can, well, so that it can be recorded eh, here. So let's see. Okay, so here we go then. Uh, Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzman. Eh, present teacher. All right, thank you, Beatriz, nice. Let's see, Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga. Not here yet, right? Okay. Then we have Carlos Antonio Escobar Hernandez. Present. Thank you very much, Carlos, good. Then we have Carlos Javier Crespin Lopez. Not here yet. And then we have, let's see, Christian Ernesto Lasso. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Christian. Good evening. Good evening, welcome. Nice to have you here. Then we have Denise Grisel Brizuela. Not here yet. Y Ember Giovanni Polio Morales. Not here yet. We have also, let me see, Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Not here yet. Y Jose Eduardo Guzmán Álvarez. Not here, not yet. We have Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Not here. And we also have Karen Vanessa Morataya. Not here as well. We have Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher, good evening. All right, good evening. Nice to have you here, Luis. Welcome, so good. And we also have Maria Elena Guadalupe. Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate, not here. All right, we have Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Nelson, Nelson, not here yet. Yes. Hello. Hi, hello, hello there. Hi, Nelson, welcome. Nice that you are here then. All right, so we have Nelson. And... Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> nice. All right, we also have Omar Francisco Hernandez. Not here yet. All right, we also have Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. 
Oscar, Oscar, not here yet. Good evening, teacher. Ya me siento mi nombre. Hello, hello. Let's see, eh, Blanca. Yes. So, let me see. Let me just repeat it. Blanca Elizabeth Alvarez. All right, nice. Thank you, Blanca. Nice. No, that's yes. fine. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. And last but not least, Jenny Suleima Santos. Not here yet. Okay. So not here yet. All right. Then. So there you go. Okay. So as I was telling you, really nice to be here with you again. If I'm going to continue with the attendance at nine. So don't worry. Uh, well, some people are going to join uh, on the way. So, well, we'll just wait for them right after that. Okay, now let's review something of, the, of this topic we were studying yesterday. If you remember, there was one thing that we were reviewing and this was the use of sequencers. What are sequencers? What are those words that we mentioned that uh, they provided order? Do you remember some examples of those words? Uh -huh. What are some examples of those words? Uh, me teacher, uh, uh -huh. some examples, words, fear, second, uh -huh. fear, then, later, after, why, next, mm -hmm. and finally. Bingo, there you go. So those were actually the words that we were reviewing, right? So we said that we use those words, first, second, third, to provide order, right? After, before. Those are words that we use to, whenever we're talking about sequences, right? And we mentioned uh, some, well, there was a conversation in which we described a process and we actually use those words in context. Now, let's do something. Let's do something to review this topic. So let me see. This is the first thing we're going to do today. So here I have this little, let's say, game, right? In which we are going to know or we're going to practice the use of sequencers. You're going to see some sentences here and in each of the sentences, we're going to have a blank space in which we are going to determine which sequencer would be the best option for uh, the sentence there, right? Since, um, well, we're going to take turns to do it. We're going to play in two groups. So let me see. Uh, ta -da 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 -da. I'm going to do it randomly here. So let's see. Okay, so we're going to work in two groups. Group number one, uh, we have uh, Beatriz, Blanca, Christian, Luis, Alfonso, and Nelson. You are group number one, okay? Team number one. Team number two, we have Carlos Antonio, Denise, uh, Juan Carlos, and Omar. All right, so you guys, you are team number two. So we're going to take turns to uh, answer uh, the questions here or to answer the, uh, the to, to play with these sentences. But in the cards, you're going to see that sometimes there are going to be traps like punishments and you, there are going to be also bonuses. So let's see. Let's give it a try. Let's start with group number one. So, ladies first. Beatriz, choose a number from one to 14. Is um, five. Number five. Let's see. Beatriz says number five. What do you think? The little boy cried. He fell off his bike, his bicycle. What do you think that we can use there? Uh, 
what word do you think that we could use from those sequencers? Maybe the war after. Oh, all right. So let's see. Christian is part of the team. Members of the team, you can uh, you can help, right? The person here. So good. After he fell off his bicycle, you say. Let's see. Respuesta definitiva. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, That's the spirit. Let's see. After, very good, nice, so excellent. The little boy cried after he fell off his bicycle, fell off to fall down, right? So he fell off of the bicycle and that's why he was crying later or after. So very good, so 25 points for team number one. Goody, goody. Let's see, team number two. Carlos Antonio, are you ready? Number nine, yes. All right, let's see, number nine. Let's see. What about this one, Carlos? We bought the movie tickets. We saw the movie. What do you think we can use there? Huh? I'm not sure in the uh -huh. after, after. Or, 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 or next. Next. Hmm. After or next. We bought the movie tickets. Next, we saw the movie. Or after, we saw the movie. Hmm. What do you think? What's your final answer? The team can also help. If the team has also some opinion, you can also mention it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not sure? Know. <laughs> All right. Help me. Uh, someone uh -huh. in my group. Omar, uy, porque se desconectaron los, los del el equipo número dos. <laughs> All right. Me dejaron. Yeah. All right, so we have uh, Omar is still there in the group. What do you think, Omar? Any ideas? No. No idea. No. <laughs> you trust Carlos then? Okay, okay, next. Uh huh. Next. Let's Next. see. And we have, there you go. So we had different <laughs> options here. So, okay. <laughs> Chitty patient. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was good, right? So the idea here is uh, that we can use different, right? Different uh, expressions, not just one. Uh, sometimes we can use in different ones, like in this case, we have then, we have next, we have after that. And the idea is that we are transitioning to a different uh, action, right? So that's the idea that we need from the sequencer. So good. Here you have this word, I'm not sure if it is included in the book, but it's then. Then is like when we say entonces, right? Or luego, then. We saw the movie. Entonces vimos la película, right? So you keep that in mind. So very good. So you got the point. 20 points for you. Let's see then. Let me see. Blanquita. Let's see. Choose a number. Number two. Let's see number two. All right, what about this one, Blanquita? The phone rang. I answer it. What do you think we could use here? Uh 
Uh -huh. You are on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> After. After the phone rang, after I answered it. Let's see if it is after. There you go, right? So same thing. We can repeat these three synonyms, right? Then next, after that, right? Sometimes we can use just after, or we can also use after that, right? With this, after that, I answered it. So very good, nice points for you. Uh -huh. Tell me, tell me. Um, bueno, en español. Y si en este uh -huh. caso solo digo after, puede ser válido o es necesario after that. The idea would be understood, right? If you say after, I answer it. Mm, but in my personal opinion, I would say it's better if you add, for example, in this case, after that, right? After that, to make reference to the previous action. Okay, I uh -huh. understand. Nice. Sí, ¿quién le quiere Thank quitar you. los Very puntos good. a Blanquita? Ah. <laughs> ya, le quiere, ya le quiere robar los 20 puntitos. <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. <laughs> goody, goody, nice. But good question. Let's see. So... Yo creo que voy a pasar a Luis y quiero ver a Luis. Lo vamos a pasar al grupo número dos porque dejaron a, a Carlos casi que solito. <laughs> all right, so Luis, you're working with Carlos, all right? So let's see. Le, Luis, you choose a number. Number 11. Number 11. Let's see. What about this one? She got on the plane and then she found her seat. What do you think, Luis? After the show, after she, after, uh -huh. after, after she got on the plane uh -huh. and then she found her seat. Her seat, is that your final answer? Are you sure? Yeah, teachers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see, Luis says, after in, ah, uh, here it was first. Since we were uh, using the expression at the beginning of the idea, right? So we say first she got on the plane, uh huh, and then she found her seat. So, um, la pista acá, Luis nos la daba then, right? No, sí, lo, lo siento, lo siento, yo en español le hablo. Si sí, no, eh, yo no le entendí bien las indicaciones y eh, eh, pensé que solo íbamos a usar el after. Oh, no. El next, eh, uh -huh. eh, el after, el next, and el then. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, okay. In, in this case, it's it. first, uh -huh. okay, la, la yes. acción, porque está hablando de una acción. Ajá, the oh, first. Oh, it's the first. Póngame 10, teacher, no me vale. <laughs> Lo siento, Carlos, te fallé. De no problem, Luis. Equipo. No problem, Luis. That's fine, Luis. We are just... Todo puede suceder. Así que, don't worry, all right? So, nice. Very good. Yeah, we're using all of the expressions, right? All of the sequencers that we are... Uh, that we are... That are in the book, right? So, nice. So, in this case... Oh, points. Let's see. All right. So let's continue with group number one. Uh, Christian. Number one. Yes. Number one? Number one. The one and only. Let's see. Ay, ay, ay. Swap points. No wow. way. Swap points? So you're going to change points now. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Oh my God. <laughs> what a present. Oh. Jesus Christ. Okay. So you see anything? Sorry, Ping. Sorry, Ping. Todo puede pasar. You see? So there you go. So let's see then. Uh, next one. So we go back to group number two. Uh, Omar.
Omar, Omar, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, number eight. Number eight. Let's see. Omar says number eight. All right. It says, he saw the fire. He cried for help. First. First? You sure? Yes. The uh, final answer first? Yes. Yes. All right. Let's see. He saw the fire. First, he cried for help. Let's see. No, in this case, it was then, right? What happened first? He saw the fire, right? So first he saw the fire and then, or next, or after that, he cried for help, pidió ayuda, right? So, mm, primero vio el, el fuego o el incendio, después pidió ayuda. So, there you go. So, in this case, no points, but still, todavía van ganando, right? So, there you go. Group number one, let me see, eh, Nelson. Okay. Let's see, Nelson. Okay, four. Number? Four? Four. All right, yes. number four, let's see. It says, I caught the ball. He threw uh, it. I caught the ball. He threw it. I caught the ball. He, he threw it. Uh huh. <laughs> Finish. First, are you sure? I caught the ball. Caché la pelota. First, he threw it. Final answer. Finish. First, let's see. Is it first? Finish. In. Oh, after, right? In this uh, case. Uh -huh, the uh, first thing. What? Okay. That he threw the ball, right? A person he threw the ball. Ah. The ball. No, primero me la tiraron y yo la caché. Entonces, si le doy vuelta, es yo caché la pelota. Ah. Después que la, me la tiraron, después que él la tiró, right? Después que la tiraron. Ah. Exactly. So that's why oh. we use here after, right? There you go. Nice. So, acá sí es bien restrictivo, okay. ¿no? Acá sí no hay como multiple choice y porque lo que le da la secuencia o el orden es el uso de el después, ¿no? El after. So, there you go. So, good. Nice. Ah, so, okay. don't worry. We're okay. still uh, in our way. Anything can happen. So, let's see. Group number two. Alguien que se haya incorporado y que no esté en grupo. Let's see. Me, teacher. Oh, Denise, there you go. Hey, how are you, Denise? How do you feel now? Better? Um, yes, better. Oh, no. Excellent. I'm glad for that. Okay, Denise. So you choose a number. Um, number 10. Number 10. Let's see. Eee! No way. Oh, my God. Luz. <laughs> So sorry, team. Subscribe, team number two. Me quedan debiendo cinco porque tenían 45. Ok, ok. Anyway, things that happen, all right. So, team number one, we go back to you. So, let me see. Uh, Beatriz. Uh, seven, Tisha. Number seven, lucky seven. Let's see. What about this one, Beatriz? They said goodbye. They left. They said goodbye. They left. Uh -huh. What do you think? 
Is puede ser múltiple también, Tisha. Ajá. ¿Cómo cuál es? Is, um, next. Next. Uh, Ajá. After or later. After that or later. Mm. Si tuviera que escoger uno, Beatriz, ¿con cuál se quedaría? Uh, later, ¿qué significa, Tisha? Later es como luego. Después. Luego como cuando digo, I'm going to do it later. Lo voy a hacer luego, lo voy a hacer después. Uh -huh. es que tendría que ser next, Tisha. Next, they left. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. <laughs> ay, 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 the four. Jesus Christ. Four. They said goodbye before they left. Here, uh -huh. Here something happened, right? Acá, y, um, dice... Antes de irse o antes de que se fueran. Usualmente cuando ocupamos los sequencers, por ejemplo, first, second, y third, after that, next, ponemos una comita, right? Le ponemos punto y a, la, a la oración y entonces ocupamos el sequencer, ponemos otra, una comita después de la palabra y seguimos con la secuencia, ¿no? Cuando ocupamos solo after o solo before, entonces ahí puede ir la oración seguida, como en este caso. Aquí han puesto un punto, pero no debería ir aquí. They said goodbye before they left. Entonces ahí sí no necesitamos la puntuación. Y eso también me da una pista de qué es lo que puedo necesitar. Right? But oh, nice. Okay. Nice, Beatrice. Good. All right. Teacher, so, uh -huh. teacher I have a question. Uh -huh. Can you use yeah. after that? After that, they say goodbye? Yes. But if, if I want to use, for example, after that here, I would use a period. They say goodbye, period. Then I start my next idea. After that, comma, they left, right? That would be like the correct punctuation. Nice. Okay, thank you. Good, excellent. So, Oscar, aprovechando. <laughs> so, Oscar, let's see. You're going to be part of team number two. So, you choose a number, Oscar. It's uh, 14. 14, the last one. Let's see. Oh, there you go. You recovered the 50 points. So you won 50 points just like that. So I recovered good. the point. <laughs> What was stolen has been recovered. So very good. 50 points then. Ya no me deben nada. <laughs> so we're, we're cool. So now you have 45. Nice. All right. So we go back to team number one. Y Blanquita. Choose a number. Mm -hmm. Number six. Number six. Let's see. Number six. All right. Tom opened the box and then he looked inside. What do you think, Blanquita? Uh -huh. What do you think? Y si la responde el otro equipo, gano también. No, <laughs> no, no, no. El, el, le pega a los del mismo equipo, pero no el otro. No se so. puede robar puntos. First. <laughs> ah, first. 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 All right. Blanquita says, first, Tom opened the box and then he looked inside. Let's see. There you go. Nice, Blanquita. So it's first, Tom opened the box, and then he looked inside. Very good. Usually, as, as we reviewed before, when we start with the, uh, with the sequencer first, uh, we use then or later or second, right? So that is a clue 
for us to get that this is the one that we need, right? So very good. Excellent. Getting some points, very good. Team number two, let me see. If, ¿Quién se me está escondiendo? Let's see. If, Elizabeth. Francis, Elizabeth. Yes, teacher. <laughs> teacher. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so All right. <laughs> don't worry. We are practicing sequencers, right? If the words that we were reviewing yesterday, first, second, third, then, before, etc., etc. So you are with team number two, Elizabeth. So choose a number from the ones mm. that are available. Three? Number three, let's see. Lemon tree. Like the, that's, a, that's the lemon tree. <laughs> yes. This is number three. Let's no see. Tiene sentido en, en español para poner. <laughs> It's a, it's a little bit crazy, yeah, the song. El palo de limón, diríamos aquí. Sí, es que no, no tiene sentido, no siento. Indeed, indeed. So, let's see, Elizabeth. It says, I got washed and dressed. I went to work. I got washed and dressed. I went to work. After. After I went to work. After. I went to work. Yes. Are you sure? Final answer. No. no? Team says no. I'm the. <laughs> B, 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 B. B, 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 B. Uh huh. What do you think, Elizabeth? Ahí le dieron una pista. Pero es que dice que primero se baña y se cambia y después Ajá. Se, bañó, to... se, se bañó, se cambió y después, Ajá. por eso yo digo after. Mm. After I went to work. Hmm. Let's see. O sea que, pero si me lo dice así, entenderíamos. Y me bañé, me cambié. Y después... después uh -huh. Y me, después fui a trabajar. Yes. Mm. Porque está hablando del pasado. Ajá. Entonces, after. Bueno, The pienso thing? que Ajá. las cosas no son como <ríe> las piensas, ¿ves? A ver. Si idioma, no. no. Something, yeah. Here, lo que hace el, el tuquito aquí de magia es la puntuación, que es lo que estábamos viendo antes. Si yo le es pongo... que acabo de venir, teacher. Ah, ah, that's the thing. Ajá, uh -huh, that's the thing. Sí, no, no estuve en todo lo okay, que están okay. haciendo. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Ah, por me eso. conecté para que diga. Creí que, que, creí que se estaba <ríe> escondiendo. <ríe> All right. No. Ayuda del equipo, acepta sugerencias del equipo. Pues sí, que sugieran, porque no sé ni cuál es ¿Sí? mi equipo. Ven, ¿Sí, teacher. What? What? Then. ¿En qué equipo me tienen? Then, then Luis says, I got washed and dressed. Then I went to work. Yes, then I went to work. Let's see. Let's find out. Oh, it was before. Oscar, por ahí estaba dando la pista. B, 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 yes, before, yes. Right? Yeah. I got washed and dressed before I went to work. Antes de irme a trabajar, right? So that's how we say. Teacher. No. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Sorry, teacher. Es que uh -huh. nosotros estamos agarrando, perdón, nuestra idea, estamos agarrando al revés <laughs> la oración. Sí, o so, sea. ¿Sabes? Ajá. Sí, Lo que nos confunde acá a veces, creo que es la traducción que hacemos Porque si nos ponemos a pensar, el later y el then, si los tratamos de adaptar, significan casi que lo mismo, ¿no? Por lo tanto, a veces sí nos pega, a veces sí va, o sí podría ser, a veces no, right? Depende del contexto. Por eso les digo, ¿qué es lo que me dice cuando es uno o el otro? La puntuación, 
la puntuación es lo que a mí me, me permite como tener una mejor idea de qué es lo que va. In this case, for example, I don't have any period, I don't have any comas, semicolons, nothing, right? No punctuation. So the only ones that I usually can use with no punctuation is before and after. I got washed and dressed before I went to work. That's why I can use it. Si yo pongo after, por ejemplo, acá, no se entiende de la misma manera como cuando ocupo eh, el punto after y, el, y la coma, right? Si yo pongo, por ejemplo, let me give you another example. After, oh, wait. After I got washed and dressed, I went to work. This is how I would say the idea, for example, in a different way. If I want to use after, if I would start with the expression, with the sequencer, and I would use the coma, right? So this is like when I say, después de que me bañé y me vestí, fui, me fui a trabajar, right? So in this way, I could use after here. Or I can also say, there are different ways to, to use it. I got washed and dressed, period. After that, I went to work. This is another way in which I could use it too, right? After that, comma. I went to work. So this could do the trick as well. So this is how we use it, right? So punctuation is what does the trick here. But good, it was nice, right? Nice try. So let's see. So we can clear Pero en español sí estaba bien. El sentido literal en español, sí, digamos, sí pegaba, ¿no? Pero al menos adiviné. <laughs> you had the idea. <laughs> All right. So still no points. No yet. All right. Nice try. Let's see. Team number one, we go back to you. So we have Christian. Number 12. Number 12. Says Christian. I watch TV. I went to bed last night. After. After I after. watched TV. After I went to bed last night. After mm -hmm. or next. After or next. Do we have punctuation? Do we have commas, periods? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, just say. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe before or before. Oh, maybe before. Do you agree? Kristen? Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Elizabeth says before. Ellie, no nos traiciones. No, pero es que yo no sé en qué. Cambio de grupo. Por eso les estoy ayudando. <laughs> en el anterior, en el anterior. <laughs> All right, but anyway. Vaya, that's why, that's why. Why. Hizo, hizo la obra, la buena obra del día. Es que nice. pensé en voz alta y no vi que el micrófono está en el All right, pero no sé, Christian, what do you think? Do you think it's okay before? Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. Shall we try? Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Yes, try. All right. Exactly. I watched TV before I went to bed. 
<laughs> there you go. So You're welcome. Nice. <laughs> All right. So just clarifying something else. We can also use after, but we can use after in a different way. Like, for example, I can say, um, I, we wait. I went to school. No, let's say I went to work after I uh, bought a coffee in the cafeteria. This is another way in which we can use after. Style after que indica, y o que es lo que nosotros entenderíamos así literalmente, después, right, el que lleva el punto, después va el after y usamos una coma, o el after that, y está este uso de after, que es el que no lleva puntuación. Pero acá es como que le demos vuelta a la idea, right? Por eso no nos pegaba after aquí. No hay punctuation, right? No commas, no periods. If I say, I went to work after I bought a coffee in the cafeteria, and I'm not using punctuation, ¿qué hice primero? ¿Compré el café o me fui a trabajar? En esta oración. What do you think? I bought, I bought a coffee. Exactly. Very good. I bought a coffee, right? That's the first thing here. So that's why it says, I went to work after I bought a coffee in the cafeteria. So that is the first action that happened. Ahí es donde hacemos el cambio en que no literalmente digo, fui a trabajar, después compré un café. No. Porque no hay coma, ni hay un punto. No puedo hacer una pausa. Lo leo corrido, ¿no? Entonces digo, fui a trabajar después que compré un café en la cafetería. Right? De ahí que es importante la coma o el punto, ¿no? So this is the thing. Por eso si le pongo aquí, I watch TV after I went to bed eh, last night. Mm, doesn't sound good, right? Porque entonces es como que si primero me fui a dormir, o sea, fui a la cama, después vi televisión, dormido, right? So, mm -mm, doesn't make sense. So that's why he, <laughs> we indicate that it was the opposite, right? So we use before. Uh, I watch TV before I went to bed. So that's the thing. Very good. All right. So we have... The last one then, so you got the points. So team number two, the last one. And let me see, quien está en el team number two, a quien le toca? Carlos, all right, so let's see. Carlos, well, we only have one number for you, Carlos, el de la suerte. 13, here we go. What do you think? I stayed awake until midnight and fell asleep. Uh -huh. What do you think, Charlie? After. After and after I fell asleep. Hmm. I stayed awake until midnight and after I fell asleep. Hmm. Final answer? Respuesta definitiva? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> For me, for, no, for me, 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 Carlos, before, is, is before, okay, before, mm, I stayed awake until midnight, and before, I fell asleep, can you, aha, mm. uh -huh. Oscar, 
Then. Then. Hmm. Sounds good. I stayed awake until midnight and then I fell asleep. Final answer, Tim. Then. 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 Let's see. All right. So here we had a couple yeah. of uh, different answers that we could have provided, right? I stayed awake until midnight. And then, and personally, I would have selected then, right? I fell asleep. Um, ¿Por qué hubiera yo seleccionado then y tal vez no las demás? Por un error que hay en esta oración, porque si sí soy bien clavado con la, con la, con la ortografía, right? Este N acá es una coordinating conjunction in English. It joins two ideas, right? No la puedo usar así como la han ocupado acá. ¿Por qué? Porque le falta una coma después de midnight. I stayed awake until midnight, coma, en, porque es otra idea, y las, esas conjunciones, o coordinating conjunctions, me ayudan a unir dos ideas. Entonces necesito una coma y después la conjunción, en este caso, en. En, y ahí sí, si yo hubiera ocupado la coma acá, entonces yo dijera en, after that, otra coma, I fell asleep, right? Ahí sí, pero eso soy yo que soy clavado. Y para no hacer tanta vuelta, para mí lo que hubiera estado más claro era then, right? Then, and then, I fell asleep. Y aún así, me deben la coma aquí en esta oración, right? Me quedaron debiendo ahí esa comita. So, that could have done the trick. Si yo hubiera querido ocupar next, after that, o finally, tenía que haber ocupado una coma después de este eh, sequencer, después de cualquiera de estos tres, right? Hacemos una pausa con esa coma y de ahí seguimos la idea. So, con then va de corrido, right? Y como no había coma aquí antes de I, lo mejor hubiera sido then. So, very good. But you got it. So, excellent. So, final scores. Winners. Team number two, so I clap for you. There you go, nice. World champions. <laughs> okay, then. So there you go. This is how we use sequencers. And sometimes we don't pay too much attention to punctuation, to commas, periods, and not even in Spanish, right? Not even in Spanish, we, we sometimes do that. But it is important. In Spanish or in English, punctuation is really important. So there you go. Okay, then. So now that we reviewed this about the uh, sequencers and all these words that, as we can see, they help us to describe processes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there you have also in your books or in your manuals, you have something related to that. But we have something else, actually. I guess we are done with, uh, with these sequencers and we are ready to go for something else. Uh, go, or if you have your manual there with you, go to page 11. On page 11, there you have, let me share my screen so that we can all see it. Let's see here. All right. So we have this conversation. This is a, a well. In this conversation, we're going to um, we're going to check a different structure that is the one that we're going to study today. So I'm going to read it for you, and then well, I'll explain to you what we're going to do. So it says uh, we have here. List well. It says we have job. And we have Kurt. So it says, Kurt, do you know what you need to have? What you need to have a good product? 
Uh, that's a good question. I think that what I would do is uh, have quality in a product. What do you mean? What I'm saying is that your product has to be the best in the market. Because of the competence, I get it. Yes, you know, a friend of mine has a honey factory. What my friend did was to get fresh honey from local farmers. Sounds great. And at the same time, he contributes to these people. All right. Now, couple of things. Well, as you can see, there are some expressions that are marked in bold letter, what we call negrita, right? Bold letter. If what you need, what I would do, what I'm saying, what my friend did. This is what we call what clauses. What clauses they introduce, if we want to say it that way, or they introduce some information or provide some extra information, right? Like in this case, Kurt, do you know what you need to have? I guess something is missing here. What you need to do to have a good product. Creo que aquí se comieron una buena parte de la frase. Yo lo que diría es, Kurt, do you know what you need to have a good product? This is what I think they are missing, right? Es una cortada esta, esta frase. What you need, do you know what you need to have? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Espérame que me perdí. Kurt, do you know what you need to have? Uh -huh, yeah, it's the same. Uh -huh, that's, that's the thing. Do you know what you need to have to do? This is what we're missing. Do you know what you need to do to have a good product, right? ¿Sabes lo que tienes que hacer para tener un buen producto? O sea, para eh, producirlo, right? Something good. So this is what they are missing. If we don't write this, it, it sounds weird, right? Do you know what you need to have? ¿Sabes lo que necesitas? So I don't know. Para tener un buen producto. It's like really literally from Spanish. So I would add to do to have a good product. And then we have, that's a good question. I think that what I would do is uh, have quality. That one, not sure either, is to, uh, I would say, what I would do is to provide quality in my product, right? So there you go. What I would do is to provide quality in my product. If I say is have quality, mm, we are missing something there, like the infinitive. So I wouldn't use that one. So I would say this, something better like this. And well, then we, they continue talking, then the rest is okay. Now, esta what clause that we are seeing here is what in Spanish we would say, lo que tú necesitas, right? What you need, what I would do, lo que yo haría, what I'm saying, eh, lo, que es, lo que yo digo, right? What I'm saying, and what my friend did was, lo que mi amigo hizo fue, Right, so all these expressions, um, they are not exactly sentences. This is what we call clauses. A clause is a mini idea that is inserted in a sentence, like in this case. Now, as I was telling you before, we use it to introduce certain information, right? Now, before we go and study something more related to this, let's practice the conversation. So let me see. Um, ta -ta -tum, ta -ta -tum. 
I will give you, so let me erase this. I will give you, let's say six minutes for you to try to uh, practice the conversation with a partner. So I'm going to open the breakout rooms. So let me see. All right, so let's see. Okay, make it a trio. So um, we'll see how that works. So we're going to work in pairs and we're going to practice this conversation. So we have a Dennis, I'm sorry, Denise with Jenny, Christian and Omar, a Carlos and Luis, Blanca and Juan Carlos, a Beatriz and Jose Eduardo, and the trio Elizabeth, Nelson, and Oscar. All right, so you're going to work uh, together. Uh, the trio, so you can take turns, right, to practice with, with the partners. Good. So I'm going to give you six minutes, and once we come back, then we're going to read the conversation. I'm going to ask some of you to read the conversation, okay? So let's see. So I'm going to open the rooms now, and there you go. You have six minutes uh, to practice the conversation, and then we come back to the main session. So you can join the rooms now, cool.
All right, let's see. Okay, little by little, we're going to be returning. So almost everybody's going to be here in some seconds. So let's see. And three, two, one, here they are. Okay, then. All right, welcome, welcome. No se me quedó nadie en el baño, let's see, no, all right, there you go. No, <laughs> no. okay, nice. <laughs> goody, goody. So let's see then, let's see how you actually uh, completed this conversation. So let's see. All right, so I'm going to choose some of you. Now I'm going to mix you, right? I'm going to choose. I'm sorry, teacher. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, have, teacher. Yeah, tell me. Lista. <gasps> yes, nine. Good. Thank you very much. Nice. Wonderful. Genial. Nice. Thank you for letting me, uh, for reminding me about it. So it's nine. So yes, let me just uh, pass the attendance and then we continue with this. So let me see. All right. So here we go with the attendance. So once you listen to your name, just say present, okay? So here we go. Eh, Ana Beatriz Campos. Present. All right, thank you, Beatriz. Eh, Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present, teacher. Nice, thank you, Blanquita, nice. Let's see, Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. All right, thank you, Carlos, very good. Y then we have Carlos Javier Crespin. No, right? Okay, not here. Then we have Christian Ernest Lasso. Present. All right, thank you, Christian. Good. Y then we have Denise y Grisel Brizuela. Present, teacher. All right, thank you, Denise. Nice. Then we have Ember Giovanni Polio Morales. Ember, not here. All right, no. Dijo el, hoy, hoy es viernes y el cuerpo lo sabe, so not here. All right. So let's see. <laughs> Next. Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Present teacher. All right, thank you. Nice, Elizabeth. Let's see, next one, y Jose Eduardo Guzmán. I'm here, teacher, I'm sorry, teacher. Um, I, 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 I not my house, teacher. Oh, you're not uh, at home right now. Uh, okay. right. Are you Thank dancing? You. Are you dancing or doing something else? No? I... <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm just messing with you. That's why no sense. So don't worry, don't worry. Okay, nice. So let's see. Next person I have Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. All right, nice. JC, nice to have you. Juan Carlos. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Thanks. Uh, thanks for being here, uh, Juan Carlos. Next, we have Karen Vanessa Murataya. Karen, not here, right? Okay. So next person, Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher. All right. Excellent, Luis. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, next person, Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Maria Elena, not here, right? Okay. So then we have Nelson Gadarrete Merino. Present, present right. teacher. Excellent. Thank you, Nelson. Very good. All right. So we continue with Omar Francisco Hernandez. Present. All right. Thank you, Omar. Very good. Excellent. And then we continue with Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Oscar. And last but not least, Jenny Suleima Santos. Present teacher. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Very good. 
Nice. All righty. Perfect then. So there you go. So again, I'm going to ask for a, the attendance almost at around 10. Okay. Now, let's proceed then with this conversation that we have here. So as I said, I'm going to select some of you uh, so that you can uh, repeat the conversation here. So let's see. Uh, first, I want to listen to Denise. Denise, you're going to be a hub, right? Or a, the first person here. And let me see. Christian, you're going to be Kurt. Okay. All right, let's see. All right. It's camera action. Uh, okay. Uh, Kurt, do you know what do you need to have a good product? Oh, that's a good question. I think that what I will do is have quality in a product. What do you mean? What I saying is that your product has to be the best in the market. Because of the competence, I get it. Yes, you know. A friend of mine has a honey factory. What my friend did was to get fresh honey from local farmer. Sounds great. And at the same time, he's contributed the, to these people. He contributes to these people. Contributes. There you go. Wow, that was really good. Excellent. So congratulations to you both. Nice. Good. Good. Well done, guys. All right. So excellent. Let me see. I want to listen to another two people. So Elizabeth and let me see. And Jose Eduardo, right? Elizabeth, you're going to be a job and Jose Eduardo is <laughs> going to be Kurt. Jose, you but, are Kurt and Elizabeth is Joe. And me, Joe. Yes, you start. Yeah. Yes, but, right, Kim, do you know what you need to have a good product? Good, that's a good question. A I good question. think that what what do you eat has quality is a product. What do you mean? What I sense about your product has to be have to be that in the market best in the because market of the com because of because of the competence i get it, get it. yes you what well, you know i friend of my ass nay factory a honey what factory my friend, what my friend did what to help get fresh, get fresh, 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 fresh honey from look a uh, local local from farmers farmers sounds great sounds great sounds great and that the sun Thank you. Say, uh -huh. can you pronounce contribute? Contribute. Con contribute. Contribute. Uh huh. So great. Okay. And that is saying the he contribute the these people. And at the same time, he contributes to these people. There you go. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for that. Excellent. Now. Okay. Uh, just something here uh, in English usually 
the pronunciation of the H is like, uh, like if you are, like if it's a J for us, right? For example, in this word here, uh, we say has, right? Uh, that your product has to be the best in the market. Also, um, there was something here, where was it? Teacher, uh -huh. por, eso, por eso es el nombre Henry. Henry, yes, for example. Porque uh -huh. nosotros no, no tenemos el Henry. Mm, Así, no. El sonido, no. el sonido de, porque uh -huh. es una H. Exactly. Y para nosotros la H es una G, como en huevo. O es muda como en hotel, no? Right? In English, the pronunciation is different. It's like uh, if we are, if it's, it's like if it's a plausible sound, right? Like uh, Henry, right? Henry, hotel, hotel. So it's different. So there you go. And Henry, of course, is a foreign name, right? So nice. Good observation. Okay, let me see. I want to listen to some more people. So, Luis, Alfonso, you're going to be John. And let me see. Uh, it's Carlos. <laughs> All right, let's see. Porque lo, lo, lo pidió. <laughs> and Carlos, you're going to be Kurt. Okay. Lose. All right. Okay, let's see. So, lights, camera, action. You start, Luis. Here, do you here do you know what you need to have a good product? Oh, that's a good question. I think that's what I would do is have quality in the product. In a product. What, what, do, what do you mean? What I'm saying is that your product has to be the best in the, in the market. Because of the competence, I get it. Yes, you know, a friend of mine has has a honey factory. What my friends did was to get fresh honey from local farmer. Sounds great. And at the same time, he contributes to these people. Contributes to these people. Contribute to these people. There you go. All right, there you go. Nice, well done, excellent. So good. Let's see two more, two more people. Let me see. Uh, Kurt, let's see. Mm, Oscar, you're going to be Kurt. And Yeni, you're going to be a uh, job. I start, teacher? Uh, yes. Okay. Kurt. Do you know what you need to have a good product? Hmm, that's a good question. I think that what I will do is have quality in a product. What do you mean? What I am saying is that your product has to be best in the market. Because of the competence, I get it. Yes, you know, a friend of mine has honey factory. What my friend did was to get fresh honey from local farmer. So great. And at the same time, he contributes to these people. Contributes to these people. Very good. Nice. Well done, you two. Excellent. All righty. So there you go. Um, let me see. Because of the time... We're going to stop here with this conversation, but uh, any new vocabulary in the conversation? Any new words? Something that was new here? Or no? Mm, 
No new words, palabras nuevas o algo que no, no se entienda de la conversación. Yes, teacher. Ajá. Um, yes. Um, what is the meaning of the quality? Quality. Quality. Quality is like a calidad, right? In Spanish, mm -hmm. right? So it's how good something is. That's quality. There you go. Thank Any, you. All right. Anytime. Any other word? I had a dog teacher. Uh huh. Uh huh. Tell me. About the honey, because uh -huh. I. O sea, he escuchado la, la, como el honey de cariño, pero Ajá. I don't know if in this case, what is the mean for the context? Ajá, very good question. Honey is an expression, right? When a wife or a husband, eh, they yeah. treat each other like in a nice way. They say, yeah, you, you, come here, honey, or listen to me, honey, something it's like my, that. It's my Teacher, wife. Y honey que no es miel, Ajá. miel. Exactly. También honey puede ser miel, que es el contexto en el que lo tenemos acá. Y ah. dice, a friend of mine has a honey factory, una fábrica Fabrica de miel. De miel. Right. Exactly. Teacher, me estaba confundiendo. <laughs> <laughs> Diferentes contextos, right? So there you go. Same word, different context. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. La fábrica de cariño. <risa> Yo pensé que Buen estaba punto. hablando de Jack Honey. Ah, caray. ¿De, ¿De qué tipo de fábrica estamos hablando aquí? So, yeah, no, pero es una fábrica de miel, right? So, it's a honey factory. So, there okay. you go. Excellent. Alrighty. So, there you go. There was something here eh, with this name, Kurt, right? Kurt. If you notice, Lo vamos a escribir acá. We have Kurt first. Y, wait. Is Kurt, right? Tenemos estas palabras. Uy, that we have this same spelling, right? I, R. Like in Kurt. Y, wait. First and Skirt. Si se fijan, no pronunciamos como una I en español. O sea, no digo kirt, no digo first, ni digo skirt, right? El sonido de la R en inglés, literalmente bien enrollada, como diría alguien por ahí. Entonces suena como R, right? R, right? R, skirt, right? First, skirt, yep. No es como la R en español. Si ustedes alguna vez han hablado con, con un gringo, ¿no? Y, y el, el gringo dice el perro, right? El perro. El perro se fue corriendo detrás de la carreta, right? Todas las R son todas enrolladas. ¿verdad? No como lo diríamos nosotros. El perro se fue corriendo detrás de la carreta, ¿verdad? Esa R bien del español, ¿no? Bien latina. Y no es igual en inglés. So, remember that it sounds a little bit different. First, right? First. Primero, first. No first. First. Skirt. Falda, right? Skirt. Mini skirt, right? Y el nombre de esta persona que también diríamos Kurt. Right, Kurt. So there you go. Just something for you to keep in mind. All right. Now, since we are talking about manufacturing, so not just this type of, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this um, clauses in a bit. But before we do that, here we have two questions. It says, number one, what does Turk's friend do to have a better honey quality? What does Kirk's friend do to have better honey quality? What do you think that he does? What is that he does to get better quality for his honey? Any ideas? The honey is fresh. Ah, uh -huh. he uses fresh honey. Where does he get the honey from? 
or from, from local farmers. From local farmers. Very good. Excellent. So he gets fresh honey from local farmers. Excellent. And then we have question two. Do you consider that quality is important in a product? Why? In volunteer. Do you consider that quality is important and why? What do you think? It's better to have good quality or good price? What's more important? Quality. Quality. Huh. Juan Carlos says quality. Why, Juan Carlos? Because he's more healthy. It's more uh, helpful, maybe? Helpful? Healthy, healthy. Healthy. Ah, healthy. in terms of the of the honey. Okay, okay. Speaking about the honey. So high quality is high expensive. It is. It's more expensive. Aha. Uh -huh. So do you prefer to pay for that good quality or do you prefer to look for different options, Oscar? I prefer pay a few money for more quality. Some more money for more quality. There you go. Nice. All right. This is like when you need some spare parts for your car. If, if you have spare parts, if you have problems with your car, for example, you can get some spare parts. Spare parts is what we call repuestos, right? Para el carro, spare parts. If, when you go to the store, they ask you, I have this, this, and this. This one, they are from China, right? This one, they're Japanese. So what do you want? Chinese spare parts, they're cheap. Japanese spare parts, they are a little bit expensive. But the best quality, Japanese spare parts, right? So you need to make a decision. Para que me alcanza? <laughs> so, será que mejor lo vendo y le compro la chinito ahorita? <laughs> so we, we think we need to make a decision, right? So according to what you need. I prefer quality too. I know it's more expensive, but it's going to last longer, right? You know that it's going to last longer, that it's going to be a good in inversion of your money. When quality is not so good, things get broken easily or you can you will have to buy again the same thing right very soon all right now now that we answered these questions as well right below uh, we have some explanations about uh, these expressions that we were studying right what clauses and here you have a little let's say definition on what a what clause is. It says, what clauses are often the subject of the verb be, which can be followed by a word, phrase, or a clause. And here we have some examples like what you need, what my friend did, what I would do, what I'm saying is. Teacher, I have a question. Uh -huh, tell me. Uh, question to us in the uh -huh. in the number one what do you need no what do you need no because it's not a question right this is the difference between a clause and a question these are all clauses we know the regular question no, que... no, es, no es question entonces no Estamos acostumbrados a ver what al inicio cuando es una pregunta, ¿no? Like, for example, what do you need? Y what do you want? Right? In these cases, we are using a question. And we know it because of two things. First, we're using a question mark, right? And second, we are using this auxiliary. What do you need? What do you want? La diferencia entre una pregunta y estas cláusulas que ocupamos acá es que en las preguntas necesitamos un auxiliar. Do, en este caso, que 
eh, el auxiliar para el presente. Pero en las cláusulas no tenemos nada. Right? So it's, we don't have an auxiliary. It's just what you need, what my friend did, what I would do. This did and this do that we are seeing here, they are not auxiliaries. They are the main verb in the sentence or in the clause in that case. So that's the difference, right? Good. Now, thank you, teacher. All right, anytime. If you notice this, the ones that we have on this side, they are starters for the idea. Son como iniciamos la idea con estas expresiones. Lo que necesitas, right? what you need. Lo que mi amigo hizo. Nosotros le ponemos el lo que. Lo que necesita. Lo que él hizo. Lo que yo haría. En inglés no, no hay necesidad de ponerle algo más. Con solo que usted le ponga what. Se sobreentiende. Right? What you need. What my friend did. What I would do. What I'm saying is. Y tiene esos puntos suspensivos porque ahí continuamos la idea, ¿no? What I would do is that I would invest more money on quality. That's what I would do, right? Lo que yo haría. On the other side, you have like the closing or you have like a complete idea here, right? So you have, for example, what you need is to have a great product. Aquí si me le pusieron el tour. <laughs> so not like in a conversation. What my friend did was, and they forgot it here again, to get a fresh ingredients. What my friend did was a, to get fresh ingredients. What I would do is sell or is to sell my product in new markets. What I'm saying is that it is not an easy task. Okay. So there you have, uh -huh. tell me. Uh, the um, second, uh, sentences. Let's uh, see here what my friend did. It's correct. Um, uh -huh. uh, what uh, what meaning? Uh, I don't understand in Spanish. Uh, okay. Here we have lo que mi amigo hizo fue conseguir ingredientes frescos. Uh, lo, uh -huh. que, okay. lo que mi amigo hizo. Right? What my hizo. friend did. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank there you. you go. Nice. Alrighty, so as you can see, these clauses or what clauses they introduce a, an idea, right? Usually we use them to provide recommendations, provide suggestions to people. So if you notice, that's what we are doing there. Eh, las ocupamos para dar recomendaciones o sugerencias, right, to people. So I'm going to give my opinion, right? So then I use this. And right below, we have a little exercise. So there we have four uh, sentences. What you need to do is to select the corresponding clause from the expressions that we have here. You're going to select the ones you think that could go here in the blank spaces according to the context. So, I'm going to give you, let's say, five minutes for you to read the sentence here and for you to use one of the expressions here in the corresponding blank spaces below, all right? Las, las expresiones que están acá, ustedes van a ver cómo utilizarlas en estos espacios en blancos, eh, en blanco en las oraciones, all right? So I'm gonna give you five minutes and then we check it together, all right? So five minutes starting now. If you have some questions, you can ask me.
All right. Did you finish? I believe yes. All right. Let's see then. Okay. So number one. In number one, we have my best friend just opened his own shop. What do you think that we can include in this expression? What my friend did. What uh, happened? Uh -huh. In this good mall. Was open it in a good mall. Very good. Nice. So what my friend did was open it in a good mall. Perfect. Very good, Denise. Nice. Then we have number two. Many people want to start their own business. Let me see. Um, let's see, let's see. Beatriz, number two. Sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> what you need is uh, not information. Excellent. Very good, Beatriz. Nice. What you need is lots of information. Very good. Excellent. Number three. Let's see. Blanquita. It's about to be done. Oh, you're not, you're not done yet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, Blanquita, that's fine. Let me see. E Omar. Hello, teacher. Hey, Omar. Uh, is um, what I call you. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, oh, very good. I don't know where she has to start. What I would do is promote the products online. Very good, nice. So let's see, number four, people don't buy new products because they can't. Um, let's see, uh, Christian. Yes. What do you um, have for? Uh -huh. um, I have a little doubt. Little doubt. Uh -huh. Doubt. Uh, doubt. Uh -huh. Because I don't understand um, um, como puedo decirlo. No puedo entender bien la, la, la. La idea. O la exacto, la idea. Exacto. Okay. Exacto. Por eso. Okay. Eh, no logro dar con la. In number four, it says people don't buy new products because they can't. La gente no compra no productos sense. nuevos ¿Por porque no puede. Right. Entonces él hace como una aclaración ahí en el, o va a hacer una aclaración por ahí. ¿Cuál de las de las estas expresiones quedaría mejor entonces? What I am saying. Ah, very good. There you go. Nice. Exactly, Luis. What I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is eh, there is no demand, right? Aquí se les fue el is. De hecho, lo incluyeron aquí. So eh, that's what it is. Eh, that's the correct answer. Esta expresión, what I'm saying is, es como cuando nosotros decimos, eh, lo que trato de decir es, right? Lo que trato de decirte es, right? So that's why he starts with the idea and then he continues. What I'm saying is, there is no demand, right? Nobody's going to buy it. There you go. So good. I guess you're getting the idea on the use of these what clauses. So, here comes here comes the interesting part about this. Teacher, uh -huh. I, Tell I, I, I have a question in Spanish. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's listen to it. Please, I I, I need a clarification. Okay, the clarification. Uh, for many uh, clauses, uh, clausulas, a qué nos referimos? Ah, nice. Good question. Una clausula y um, 
es como una parte de una oración. Las oraciones a veces están compuestas de dos cláusulas, ¿verdad? O de más cláusulas. Las cláusulas son ideas, pero las cláusulas no pueden ser oraciones por sí mismas, ¿no? Por ejemplo, si yo digo, what you need, eh, what you need, así solito, no veas, no, no tiene sentido lo que necesitas. ¿Qué veas? ¿De qué hablamos? ¿De, o de lo que yo necesito? ¿De qué? Es eh, low. Ajá, o what are you going to say, right? So the idea is, is incomplete. So that's a clause, for example. All the ones, the examples that we have here, what you need, what my friend did, what I will do, what I'm saying is, those are clauses. And what we do with clauses is that we complement or we complete the idea with something else, like in the other side of the, of the chart here. What you need is to have a great product. Ah, now the idea is complete. We have a sentence, right? Tenemos una oración. But how do we create that sentence? With a clause. We used actually a clause, in this case, to be the subject. En esta oración, por ejemplo, la cláusula, uy, uy, la cláusula es, de hecho, el mismo sujeto de la oración, porque es lo que tú necesitas, ese como la canción de Alex Sintek. So, ese es el sujeto, de hecho, de la oración. What you need is, right? So, quedémonos con que una cláusula es, es una idea, o una mini idea dentro de una oración. Right. Teacher, Ajá. teacher, entonces una cláusula, cláusula en inglés no es lo mismo que en español, porque en español una cláusula es como una condición. Podría ser, yes. Uh -huh. Y también en inglés, si estamos hablando, volvemos a lo mismo, en otro contexto. Ah, es que no le comprendí, <risa> <risa> no le comprendí. No, 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 no. Porque no. eso es lo que yo sé como cláusula, pero en Ajá. español es, yeah. es una condición de algo o es algo que, que puede uh -huh. pasar. Como en un contrato, por ejemplo. Ajá, un contrato como en un contrato. Cláusulas. Si pasa esto, Ajá, hay ciertas cláusulas. Ajá. In English, we can use it in both ways too. A clause in a contract, it's also a condition. Right, a condition that if you don't do this, we won't do that. Right, or if you do this, we will do this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it can be also a condition, but that is in legal terms. Usualmente esos son términos legales. Mm -hmm. Cuando hablamos gramaticalmente de una cláusula, y es esto que les, les acabo de explicar, ¿no? que es una parte de la oración. Pero son contextos diferentes. One more time. Teacher, sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, tell me, tell me. Aparte de estas, hay otras cláusulas. O sea, yes. for, example, for, for example, for example, uh -huh. what, 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 what I want. No. What I want? Ah, what, what I want. What I want. Excellent. Yes. Uh -huh. Exactly. What I want uh -huh. is another example. What I want is that you do this or that, right? So. Well, well, what, what I want to work because I have to pay my, my bills, okay? Uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Exactly, All right. there you go. Por eso de clase de 8 a 10. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice, there you go. Excellent, that's a good example. It's a good. All right, so there you go, pretty much. That's what a clause is, right? Now, aquí viene la prueba de fuego. Let's see if you can actually complete this little exercise that we have here. So here you have an exercise that you're going to complete in pairs. If you're going to prepare a short presentation about a product from your company, well, it can be something related to your job or you can think of something else, right? I'm not going to make it like they're restricted. No se lo voy a poner muy restrictivo. Puede ser un producto que esté relacionado a su empleo o pueden inventarse, digamos, una empresa 
y un producto, right? ¿Qué van a hacer? It says, introduce important information about this product using what clauses. So, y, for example, you're going to say, y, what you need or what we need is that you buy this product for this and this reason, for example. Y, what you can do with this product is this and this and this, right? So you're going to try to describe or to talk about this product using what clauses, yes? So you're going to pretend that you are selling the object or the product to, to us, right? To the rest of your audience. And that pretty much it. Doesn't have to be like really long. So you just tell us the product in some of the characteristics of the product by using what clauses, okay? Or some information about the product using what clauses. So you're going to work in pairs for this. So let me see. So we're going to create one more time in the breakout rooms. So here we go. Okay. So oh, I have, we're going to have a trio here. So there you go. Okay then. So I'm going to open the small rooms. Acuérdense, y pueden pensar de un producto, pueden crear, digamos, su propia compañía o su propia empresa de mentiras. Y el chiste es introducir o proveer información de este producto usando esas what clauses, right? So, we're going to work. Number one. Y... Uy, se me salió alguien ahorita. So, let me see. So, I'm going to move someone else again. So, it's going to be Juan Carlos and Jenny. Y Blanquita and Carlos. Y Beatriz and Oscar. Luis and Omar. Christian and Nelson. Denise and Jose Eduardo, all right? So there you go. So I'm opening the rooms right now. And there you go. So you will have a, let's say 10 minutes for you to try to complete this mini presentation. It can be just a two minute presentation. That's fine. So let's see. All right, so you can join the small rooms now. Very good.
Okay, okay, nice. All right, so we are, well, the rest of you is about to come back. So we'll see. Let's wait for them. Some more seconds, so they're gonna be here. All right. Okay, and then and then again, I guess we are all back. All right. So let's see. So how was it? Did you finish? Did you complete your presentation? No. No, les corté la inspiración. All right, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let's do something. Since anyway, we weren't uh, we were not going to have like enough time to present. We're going to leave it as a homework for Monday. Okay. Lo vamos a dejar de tarea para el lunes, ya que igual no vamos a tener tiempo de, de presentar ahora. So, le voy a compartir en el chat. Y la imagen de la, la lista de, de, de los participantes para que vean con quién iban, right? No se me olvidó, pues si no han terminado. So that you can get, a, so you can reach an agreement, right? Pero si no han terminado, para que puedan seguir trabajando, se pongan de acuerdo después. Okay. Perfect teacher. Excellent, nice. Good, good, good. Okay, so pasamos lista entonces, the last time. And then I'll let you go because it's almost 10. Solo se queda, bueno, como vamos en orden de la lista, se tendría que quedar blanquita y los 10 minutos después de la clase. Y no hay problema, blanquita. No, no hay problema. Nice. Very good. Excellent. Okay, then. So let's start. Ana Beatriz Campos. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Very good. Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present, All right, thank you very much. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you, Carlos. Y Carlos Javier Crespin. Not here. Y Christian... No tiene luz en su casa, por eso no se conectó hoy. ¿Cómo? No tiene luz en su casa, por eso no se conectó ah. hoy. Yo me escribí. Ah, okay, okay. Good, good to know. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. Tal vez el lunes entonces se conecta. Nice. Me dijo que el lunes tal vez. Entonces, ah, ok. Ahí tendría que estar. <laughs> Vamos a ver entonces. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. Ok. So we continue with, let me see. Y Cristian Ernesto Lazo. Thank you, Cristian. Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ember Giovanni Polio. Oh, he's not here. Y let me see, Francisca, Elizabeth Martínez. Francisca, Elizabeth. Se nos durmió. <laughs> ok, le dio sueño después de comer. Yes. <laughs> no, right, she's not here. Ok, se nos fue. Ok. Then we have, let's see. Y José Eduardo Guzmán. I'm here. All right. Teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Juan Carlos Rivas. I'm here, teacher. All right. Thank you, JC. Y Karen Vanessa Morataya. Not here. Luis Alfonso Martínez. Present, teacher. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate. No está acá. Y Nelson Gabarrete Merino. I'm here, teacher. All right. Thank you, Nelson. Good. Omar Francisco Hernández. Present. All right. Thank you, Omar. Y Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present, teacher. Thank you, Oscar. And Jenny Suleima Santos Chávez. Present, teacher. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Perfect then. So, well, thank you very much, guys, for being in today's class. As always, a pleasure for me to be here with you. Enjoy your weekend. 
uh, get some rest, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Thanks, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right. My pleasure. Bye, bye, bye guys. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye. Enjoy your weekend. Bye, bye. See you tomorrow. No, yeah, no. No, Monday, Monday. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Mañana no. Bye, bye. 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 Bye. Okay. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Take care. All right. Bye. So, blanquita. Entonces, vamos a ver. Let's see. Wait. Okay. Hoy sí. Bye, blanquita. Estos y eh, bueno, ocho minutitos que nos quedan ya y es para, bueno, por si usted tiene alguna duda, alguna pregunta, no necesariamente tiene que ser de los temas que, que estamos viendo porque acabamos de empezar. Uh -huh. Y puede ser de algún tema que ha quedado por ahí en el aire, eh, de los niveles anteriores, eh, cualquier duda que usted uh -huh. pueda tener. Aunque ahorita sí tengo esa duda de que no entendí de la coma, del puntito, de la que ah. estaba en la primera, no lo entendí muy bien. Ah, ya, ya. Entonces, sí, o sea, ¿qué, ¿Qué tiene que ir? O sea, ¿qué Ajá. tiene que ir realmente después de la coma o del punto? Ok, no sé. vamos a ver entonces eso. Y todas esta, estas reglitas que, que les estábamos viendo hacen referencia a estos, estas expresiones que hemos visto acá, que son, eh, ¿cómo se llaman? Los eh, sequencers, right? Entonces, estos sequencers son, nos sirven como para dar, eh, para llevar un orden, ajá, una, una secuencia en las acciones o en, lo, en los pasos para hacer algo, ¿no? Entonces, la mayoría de estas palabras eh, se valen del uso de la coma, ¿no? Y si vemos todos estos ejemplos acá, todos tienen una coma. Ajá. Cuando ocupamos el, el, la palabra, hacemos una pausa, como cuando en español, igual que en español, uh -huh. cuando diríamos primero, combine eh, la margarina, el azúcar, dos huevos y vainilla, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Como el primer paso ahí. Se, se hace como esa pausa. Uh -huh. Lo que salió en, el, en, el, en la práctica que tuvimos al inicio fue que eh, teníamos after y teníamos before. Uh -huh. Entonces, con before, que no está incluido en esta lista. Sí, pero que, eso, eso vi, no está. Ajá, pero que también es parte de, ¿verdad? Este, uh -huh. Muchas veces no se ocupa la coma, sino que se escribe la oración de corrido. Entonces, cuando nosotros, pero eso es casi que solo sucede con before y con after. Por ejemplo, puedo decir... Eh, Add some water before you eh, add your coffee. Por decir algo, ¿verdad? agregue algo de agua antes que agregues tu café. Bueno, antes que agregues el café. So, en este caso no ocupo una coma y porque la palabra no lo requiere, no. Solo mm -hmm. es. Eso significa literalmente antes. Entonces, ahí nos surgió la duda porque también vimos un after que no usa coma. No como este after de acá, que si la lleva. Entonces, ahí fue donde nos empezamos a hacer bolas y porque vimos que este after no lo ocupa. Por ejemplo, eh, cuando yo digo y, um, I arrive to my office after I left my daughter at school. Bye. Tenemos este ejemplo y tenemos también el otro after que es como cuando decimos I left my daughter at school After that, I arrived to my office. This, for example. 
Bah, dijimos que con before no usamos la coma, ¿no? la podemos usar corrida. Pero el after lo podemos ocupar de las dos maneras. El after sin coma, y digamos que me le da un poco de vuelta la idea, y de ahí es que me confunde un poco, ¿no? Si yo reviso esta oración, ¿qué es lo que hice primero? ¿Cuál es la acción que hice primero? Que fue la oficina. Mm, no. Eh, ver, no puedo calificar. <risa> All right, llegué, llegué, ¿no? llegué a mi oficina después que dejé a mi hija en el colegio. Entonces por eso no tiene que llevar la coma ni nada. Porque Ajá. lo está haciendo de una sola vez. Mm, más o menos. No exactamente de una sola vez, sino mm, que... Lo que pasa primero. Ajá, por ahí, por ahí vamos. Algo hice primero, ¿no? Hice algo mm. primero antes de la primera acción que estoy describiendo. ¿Qué es lo que hice primero antes de llegar a la oficina? Llevó a su hija a la escuela. Ajá, exacto. Entonces, dejé a, eh, llegué a la oficina. Sí, pues, ¿no? Después de que dejé a mi hija en la escuela, ¿no? Entonces, lo primero que hice fue dejarla a ella y después yo me fui a la oficina. Ese... Ese es el after que no lleva coma. Y el que indica que yo hice... Eh, una acción. Una acción, la... exacto. Y es bien irónico y ahí es donde es confuso porque a pesar de que la palabra after significa después, eh, da, el, da a entender que algo se hizo antes, ¿verdad? Antes de la, de la acción que está haciendo. Exacto. Ajá, de la primera acción que yo describo. En la segunda, no, en la segunda es como más claro, porque tengo, dejé a mi hija en la escuela, la escuela. punto. Punto, o sea, lo hizo primero y Ajá. después se fue. Exacto, así claramente eh, se puede ver qué es lo que hice yo primero, voy como en uh -huh. orden. Y no como en la anterior que estaba como al revés. Acá. Ah, sí. Ajá, es algo confuso. Ajá. Que es lo mismo, pero. Exacto, es lo mismo prácticamente. Solo, solo que aquí está agregando aceptar. Ajá. Aquí, solo after. aquí podríamos incluso decir. O sea, casi, after, significa after. casi lo mismo, pero. O sea, sí. la acción. Ajá. Es lo que. Es lo que hace que. Como el. Como la comita o el punto. Ajá. O sea, cuando correcto. lleva punto, quiere decir que es la acción que hizo. Ajá, cuando lleva el punto, eh, digamos, es literalmente en ese orden pasaron las cosas. O sea mm. que esto fue lo primero que hice. O sea, no hay ninguna, ninguna confusión no hay ninguna ahí. Acción, ajá, porque ajá. esa es la acción que hice. Exacto, esa es la primera acción que hice. Por eso pongo un punto y después sigo contando qué hice después, ¿no? Luego, mm. after o después, eh, llegué a mi oficina, ¿no? Entonces ahí no hay pierde, como decimos. En la anterior es solo como, tal vez para darle un poco más de estilo, podría ser, si tal vez yo no quiero hacer dos pedazos o dos oraciones, y ya eso ya es un, una cuestión de estilo a la hora de hablar o de escribirlo, y podría ocupar el after de la otra forma, ¿no? De decir, yo llegué a la oficina después de que yo hice otra cosa, ¿no? ¿Verdad? O hice esta acción después de que terminé la otra. ¿Verdad? Ah, no necesariamente debemos poner así, sino que dependiendo de cómo lo vayamos a, Exacto. a escribir. Ajá, aquí ah. esto depende de cómo ustedes lo quieran hacer, ¿verdad? No necesariamente tiene que ser una o la otra forma, sino el inglés. Es la, es forma, es la forma que ah. lo, lo tenemos Exacto. que decir. Exacto. Ajá, es la ah. forma que, es que ustedes sí. se sientan más cómodos para decirlo, ¿no? Sí, que a veces hacemos que lo, lo del español queremos hacerlo en inglés. Exacto, <ríe> ajá, queremos. Y no funciona así. Ajá, a veces no, no nos pega, ¿verdad? No nos ajá, sale, sí, pero porque es, por, es por lo mismo que estamos adaptados al español. Exacto, ajá. Sí. Pero poco a poco uno va como desprendiéndose de, la, de esa idea que nosotros mantenemos del español y lo empezamos a separar. O sea, es un proceso. Así sí, que... Algo difícil. Sí, <risa> toma sí. tiempo, toma tiempo, pero se puede. Así que sí, puede. Eh, es normal ahorita como confundirnos un poquito en el orden de, de ciertas ideas, de ciertas palabras, pero poco a poco le vamos allá. O sea, así que, sí, sí. don't worry. <risa>
Sí, poco a poco le voy a llegar. Nadie se la quita, perfecto. Vaya, sí, chivo. Me... Ajá. ¿Algo más? más? Tiempo? No, no sí. Sé. Eh, ya nos pasamos, pero si tiene otra duda, aprovecha. Ah, en las oraciones, no necesariamente tiene que ir primero cuatro y unir, o siempre tiene que ir en medio, o... Y depende, y podría ser, quiero ver, vamos a, a ver eso, en la última que vimos, en las what clauses, no necesariamente tiene que empezar, digamos, con, con, la, con la cláusula, ¿verdad? con la what clause. Puede ser que en algunos casos yo tenga, y I think... What you need is to get some exercise. En este caso, por ejemplo, no necesariamente empecé con el what you need is, sino que le puse una expresión antes. Lo, yo pienso, ¿verdad? I think what you need is to get some exercise. So, pienso que lo que necesitas es ejercitarte o hacer algo de ejercicio. So, y podría decirlo de un solo, empezar desde el what you need is to get some exercise, pero no necesariamente, tiene que ir siempre así. Puedo incluir una frase y que tal vez es lo que yo voy a utilizar al inicio, ¿no? Y, así que el orden en sí del, la, de la clause ahí no es como muy, no es como una regla, no, no es algo muy ah, restrictivo. Ajá. No lo podemos utilizar así dentro de lo que vamos a poner. Correcto. Pero que la Ajá. expresión se tenga. Exacto, sí. depende de la, de la idea que queramos expresar ¿no? y no, cómo no. la queramos expresar. Como decía Watson, que me pregunta. Ajá, ajá. Entonces, como... Las preguntas siempre van al inicio, entonces. Ah, ajá, sí. Ahí en medio. Ah, ajá. Ajá, entonces eso estaba, estaba poniendo dudas. Oh, nice. Sí. sí, cuando es pregunta, ahí sí, a ley sí va al inicio. What uh -huh. do you need? En este caso, por ejemplo, sí, a ley la tenemos que poner uh -huh. al inicio, ese what. Uh -huh. Pero, en la, Pero en la como otra, ahí no lleva sin interrogación, no es uh -huh. que lo de esa manera. Exacto. Como no es una pregunta en sí, no necesitamos por obligación ponerlo al inicio. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Nice. Excelente. Ya me aclaró. Excelente. Perfecto. Puedo perfecto. dormir en paz. <risa> Podemos sí, descansar. Estaba pensando, sí, estaba pensando. Pero me había quedado nice. así. Ah, problema. chivísimo. Igual, vamos a seguir como repasando esto el lunes todavía. Así que, bueno, por ahí si este, lo podemos aclarar más todavía, el lunes aprovechamos también. Pero sí, me, me queda claro. Sí. Perfecto, excelente. Entonces, Blanquita. Bueno, thank you bueno nice. Un gusto. Gracias. Entonces, Blanquita, thank you very much por quedarse ese ratito más, ese thank ratito you. extra. Y pues, disfrute su fin de. Nos vemos entonces. Me en queda la, tengo que trabajar todavía mañana. ¿Ah? Tengo que trabajar todavía mañana. Yo también. Ah, pues estamos igual. Sí, así que bueno, medio disfrutaremos sí. el fin de. Sí, cabal. Poco nice. Sí. Good night. Bueno, good Thank night, Laquita. Take care. Sweet dreams. Bye-bye.